back to you. So uh, just would like to inform all audiences that we will be recording the session. Um, well, um, I will start now, if it's all okay with you. Um, we will start on time and uh, we will also end on time uh, to respect the time that you have allocated for us. So I would like to welcome everyone all again. And my name is Yip Yen, and I'm responsible for business development. Uh, today you will hear from me, and basically I will share with you um, some of the automation trends that we see uh, coming into 2023. And at the same time, you will also hear a lot from our consultant. Uh, name is Justina. She's basically our D365 FinOps consultant. All right. So let me just proceed to the next slide. So this is the agenda for today. And you will see that uh, Justina will be doing the software demonstration to show you basically the end-to-end -end AP processing that Xflow will do. And one of the main points or uh, a point of differentiation is basically Xflow is completely integrated into D365, all right? Now, um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to just post your questions into the meeting chat that is available there. Um, we will not answer your question immediately. However, at the end of the session, we have allocated Q&A and we will read through your questions. And at the same time, that will be the time where you can actually ask those questions. So I appreciate your patience on that. So I would like to start up by introducing our company and who we are and why we exist. And basically you may not have heard of SignUp Software, but SignUp Software was founded in 1999 and Xflow, the product solution itself, was first introduced in 2003. Uh, it's already 20 years that has gone by. And just to share with you, we are quite proud to say that uh, our first customer that signed up with us is still using Xflow and is still with us, right? Um, we currently have over 120 employees and over 1,300 customers globally. And the great news is that we now have local support uh, coming out from Singapore uh, for Southeast Asian countries. Now, more importantly in this slide, uh, I want to share with you is that Xflow is a Microsoft preferred solution. And it, what that means is, is that it's certified for Microsoft Dynamics. And to be certified, as you all know, uh, as a Microsoft preferred solution, we need to guarantee that we will always keep this functionality in sync with any new releases of D365 FinOps. So uh, this basically reduces the risk for both the customer and even partners yourself. And if there is any new D365 upgrades, it means that uh, Xflow will also upgrade in line with that. All right, so I just wanted to share that with you uh, about this solution. Now we do have a lot of customers, like what I said earlier, uh, over 1,300 customers. The key point here is that basically uh, Xflow has been implemented across multiple different types of industry. Likewise, also the size of the organization itself. And it also doesn't matter uh, whether you are having a 1,000 invoices per year or 2 million invoices per year. Um, pretty much Xflow caters for all different facets of that size of company. So basically it's suitable to be configured to any industry, to any organization and any volume of invoices. Now, as you know, Based on our experience with many of our customers, these are some of the common challenges that we find. And, and I'm pretty sure that you are aware of all these challenges too, right? Uh, so typically, as you know, that if their AP processing is manual and paper-based, right, it will take time. 
it will take time and it's also very tedious. And due to this manual and tedious process, basically it increases the risk of errors. I won't say every company will always be faced with many, many errors, but it increases the risk of all these errors occurring. And as a result of all these errors, the approval process becomes delayed and therefore you have a lengthy approval turnaround time. And what that means also basically, you could miss up on payment deadlines and incur late penalty charges. Uh, and some of the penalty charges could be quite high. So as a result and as a consequence of that, we know that basically it increases the high process cost in processing all your invoice. And this is really unnecessarily if it's managed well, right? Now, I want to share with you something interesting, which is from McKinsey, and it's a, one of the top three uh, consulting companies. Uh, what they have done is they came up with an article talking about moving from a cash preservation mode to a cash management mode for an organization in the next normal, meaning after the pandemic, and now we are in the endemic, and pretty soon, maybe we'll forgot or forget about COVID-19, right? But they highlighted three key levers and best practice a company can take. And the first element that they call out is basically supplier management, where the focus is on the supplier's past performance such as their pricing, their quality of goods delivered, their reliability, and also their code of conduct, whether are they good or are they bad. And this will allow a better negotiation on pricing if there is a framework or a structure to manage this. And the payment terms identified basically will help you to see whether do you need to have an alternative supplier as a backup just in case, right? And that's part of a supply chain strategy. Now, the second element which uh, McKinsey calls out is basically the payment terms, where if a company works with the suppliers and standardized payment terms, uh, and also the procure to pay processes, typically it improves the efficiency of all the invoice processing. And this will help the company to promote what we call compliance. And that is what is very important nowadays with companies that companies are compliant. Likewise, also the suppliers are compliant. Now, the third element which McKinsey call out in terms of addressing supply chain disruption and coming up with best practice is that the procure to pay process efficiency where companies position themselves lightly as a reliable customer. You know, you want to position to your suppliers that you are a customer that pays on time uh, in light of all these supply chain disruptions. Now, the second one you can do is basically standardization of payment terms, which can help streamline the processes to reduce the errors and increase the reliability. And to add to that, McKinsey also called out that, hey, you can actually leverage on technology, such as process automation to help reduce human errors and the costs associated with the payment process. And this really sums up pretty much what Xflow can help to do for your customers and whoever customers that are also online right here. Our AP automation process solution called Xflow will help to address this best practice, right? Now, some of you may think that, okay, um, I don't think I need it yet, but what are the signs that will tell me that I will need it, right? Now, from our experience after implementing over 1,300 plus customers, there are five signs that we have called out that we think that a company may start to look at AP automation. The first one is, are you missing payment deadlines? 
if you are and you are incurring quite the substantial late payment charges, then it is something worth considering. The second one is basically, is your business growing? I mean, it's great that your business is growing, right? And if your business is growing year on year, like let's say over 20%, that would be an indicator that, hey, maybe it's time for some automation to be introduced into your company. And why not AP automation? Third is basically making mistakes through payment. You know, if you're catching errors that are increasing, then basically that is definitely a surefire sign that you should consider uh, automating your AP processes. The fourth one is basically the finance team. Do you see your finance team having more sick leave, employee absences? And those are just simple symptoms that tells you that maybe it's time to introduce automation into the financial accounting processes. And the final one is basically, does your management have a lack of cash flow visibility? Now, AP reporting, you could get it from standard reports, but you will see later in the solution demo that basically uh, we do have uh, dashboards with real-time information and real-time analytics, all right? I will let Justina share with you on that. So if your company starts to demonstrate some of these symptoms, then basically um, it is an indicator that uh, you may have to consider automation in your organization. And from our experience where we have worked with a, a consultant who have helped uh, survey some of our customers, you can see from these key metrics here, basically that there is a vast improvement, at least 2.5 times improvement in terms of moving it to a touchless processing, 50% lower invoice exception rate, which will help you to get towards a touchless processing. Yep. And the efficiency in terms of processing invoice have now moved from 11 days to three days. And likewise, a cost per invoice from a 14 US dollars down to about 250 US dollars. So this is just some of the key metrics. Of course, different companies will experience different metrics, but pretty much overall, you will experience some of these benefits, right? Now, I wanna share with you basically some of the AP automation trends before I hand it over to Justina, right? What we see in 2023 and moving beyond is basically the first one is artificial intelligence and machine language that will continue to be pervasive in the whole AP automation process. One example that we use machine language is basically Xflow uses machine language to actually learn our customers' different invoice formats. Yeah, we do not need to create multiple templates for each of our customers. And you will get a chance to see a little bit of that later. So we have uh, include machine language and even artificial intelligence into this. And this is basically all coming from the Microsoft footprint landscape, right? So this is one, the first thing that we will see that will continue to be pervasive in 2023. The second one, basically not new, but continue to be more, is real-time business insights into the AP process. You may have real-time business insights into sales, et cetera, but many companies lack the sales in terms of the real-time insights into their AP cash flow management. And this is something that we will provide uh, through our Xflow solution. The third trend that we will see is that People are now moving from a paperless and all the way to ultimately and the ideal situation of touchless processing, right? And touchless processing is possible, especially when you have a stable uh, environment where you notice that you have less errors made, uh, less exceptions and standardized payment terms, um, and standardize agreements with the suppliers. And this will allow you to move into a touchless processing situation. The fourth trend that we see is that 
you will continue to lower your source to pay costs. As you can see earlier in our key metrics, we have reduced from a 14 US dollars to about 250 US dollars. Of course, you will not reduce down to free, but yeah, we are able to help companies reduce costs. And this is something which companies would typically love it and appreciate it. The final trend that we will see is basically e-invoicing. E now, this is something which, to be frank, countries have already started to introduce e-invoice initiatives, right? Countries like Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, and even Vietnam. Now, uh, what we can see now is that these countries have introduced these initiatives. However, I would like to even say, boldly say that over time, these countries will pretty soon, most likely legislate this practice. And what that means is that all companies may have to go on board onto a platform where they can actually start to do the billing and um, payment to both their suppliers and also to themselves, their customers, right? So definitely e-invoicing is something which Southeast Asian countries, especially in Singapore and Malaysia, even Thailand, will definitely get the chance to see that it may legislate pretty soon, right? So why not start now, right? So with this, I would like to just stop and pass my presentation over to Justina, who will now uh, share a screen basically to show you Explore on D365 Finance and Operations. So Justina, over to you. All right, thank you, Yipian. Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, on this webinar. So yeah, my name is Yusina and I'm the uh, consultant working for Signup Software based in Singapore. Okay, so before that, I will we'll start to share my screen. I hope everyone can see my screen okay. Yes. Uh, can I take a yes? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And today I'm going to demonstrate the daily processing of account payable invoices using the Expo solution. So throughout the demo later, I will also be discussing some of uh, out of the box feature within the solution. So basically to show you how the Expo solution can help the organization to enhance the efficiency around the invoice processing. All right, so I would like to start with a quick overview of our solution using the diagram that you are seeing on the screen right now. So the Expo solution has uh, two components. The first component is our OCR tools called Expo Data Capture powered by Covex. Then we have the second component, which is uh, D35 Finance and Operation, where Expo resides as a fully integrated module as built-in solution, Explore utilizes the master data, the configuration, and the logic of the standard D35. Okay, so how this component works together? The process starts from the invoices, from the vendor invoices being sent into the Expo data capture for the scanning and then interpretation. Expo data capture then capture the relevant invoice information and present to the user. User will verify, confirm, and capture the data. So once confirmed, Expo Data Capture then create an XML file containing the capture uh, invoice data and the image to be imported into the Expo module in D35. So once imported into the Expo module, Expo will then uh, manage and administer the invoices, such as uh, matching invoices to the valid purchase order if it is the PO invoices, or does the coding suggestion if it is for non-PO invoices, as well routing for the approval if approval is required based on the organization delegation of authority rules. So basically, Explo solution automates the required works to make the invoice ready for payments, so the invoice can go directly from your vendor to your account payable team ready for payment without any manual intervention. Okay. So as mentioned uh, by the uh, UPN before, so if uh, you receive the invoice uh, uh, in EDI format or 
uh, electronic uh, format. As long as the invoice format is in uh, within the XML and follow the XML schema, the invoice can be directly import to the Explo module within DTT5, where Explo will also generate the invoice image for those EDI invoices. Okay. So for this demonstration, uh, please note that I have not set up the automation whatsoever. So most, if not all, the step that I will go through with you today should be automated. Okay, Explore solution is built in to handle the exception. If automation was set up, I will probably not have anything to show you today. Okay. So before I'm going to the actual software demonstration, uh, just to set the scene of this demonstration, I'm going to play uh, two roles. The first role, I'm going to be an AP officer to show you the invoice processing side. How do we get the invoice to the business? And I'm going to switch cap and move on to the approvals to show you <clears throat> what it looks like from the approval perspective. Okay. All right. So let me open the, the system now. Okay. As you can see here. Okay. This is this is my Explo data capture. So for this demonstration, we are going to assume that your vendor invoice are sent to the centralized AP inbox as the PDF attachment to the email. Either can be from your vendor directly or from the people within the business. Okay, so with uh, the Explore solution, by simply setting up the auto forwarding rule in your Outlook, the invoice will be sent out automatically to the Expo data capture and the system will be able to pick up, identify and interpret the invoice data. Okay, so as an AP officer, this will be my default view when I log in to the Explore Data Capture. Uh, it will give me the list of the invoice that has been sent. Okay, I can also do the filtering if I want to get the specific information of the uh, invoice. As well, I can also upload the uh, invoice manually. All right, so I will now open one invoice to see a more detailed view. Okay. To open, I can double click uh, on any of the lines here or click start button. Right. OK. All right, so this is the detailed view screen for the invoice. So as the AP officer, this is what I will see if I want to confirm or to verify the data captured by the Expo Data Capture. So what we have here, we have the invoice image in the middle, which I can zoom in and zoom out using my uh, control key on my keyboard. Okay, let me zoom a bit. Okay, and we have the predefined uh, header fields on the right hand side. And also we have the uh, capture the line details at the bottom of the screen, which means we can capture the line information of the invoice as well. So this especially for the invoice related to the purchase order. OK, so how does the if, uh, Expo Data Capture interpret the required data? So Expo Data Capture uses the machine, uh, machine learning and AI technology to look for the certain character or the keywords such as the invoice number or the invoice date to capture the data first time it received from the vendor. Okay, hence there is no requirement for you to prepare or build the specific vendor invoice template. Okay. So as I tap through the field, I can see where the information for the invoice has been picked up by Expo Data Capture. Okay, the data verification process in the Expo Data Capture works like a traffic light system. Okay, what it means that all the field must be in green before the system is able to generate the XML file to be imported into Expo module in D3D5. Okay, the green uh, icon indicate that a field has been captured correctly. The yellow warning icon indicate that a value is uncertain or failed the validation. Okay, so here we can see that the most of the field interpreted are in green without the problem. Okay, that is because that the Expo Data Capture is able to interpret at least 80 to 85% of the data first time it received from the vendor. Okay, this means, for example, if we capture, for example, we capture the system to configure uh, 10 lines, sorry, uh, 10 fields, Expo Data Capture will be able to find out 8 out of the 10 fields for the first time the invoice received from the vendor. 
because some of the reason that the fields uh, are not green, for example, could be the validation that we have uh, set up in the system, like this example, where we wanted a trigger uh, uh, to the user or the warning if the invoice is more than uh, 90 days old. Okay. The other reason could be that the Expo data capture uh, capture the data, but it is unsure that it is the correct and therefore required confirmation from the first uh, <coughs> required excuse me required confirmation from the first time the invoice received from the vendor. Okay, so to confirm, I can just simply tap, and the field will become green. Okay. To capture the data, what I can do, for example, let me uh, wipe this invoice reference. Okay, I can uh, double click the value where I want, or I can draw the circle using my uh, control keyboard. Okay, to capture the information. Okay, so by performing this action, I'm actually teaching the Expo data capture where to capture the relevant data for this vendor going forward. OK, so please note that the export data capture does not require the vendor master to be available in order to interpret the invoice information. This will eliminate the need for the synchronization between the OCR and DTC5. OK, so you uh, probably will ask, so how if there is no vendor master, how the vendor account is identified? OK, so for the standard Singapore profile, for example, to identify the vendor, we typically use the capture GST number and our bank account number to look up and assign the relevant vendor account to the invoice when the invoice is imported into Expo module in D35. OK, please note that this is not the only field that we can use to identify the vendor. We can use other identifiers such as the purchase order number, organization number or account number or even phone number or the combination of those identifier to look up for the vendor when the invoice imported into D3C5. Okay. Expo data capture support multiple invoices attached to a single email. And if your vendor send you a single PDF file for the multiple invoices, you don't need to split the file manually. There is also a feature within the Expo data capture to split the invoice individually okay so in terms of the automation there are different level of automation available in the expo data capture okay apart from the manual verification which is what i have set up here expo data capture support the automation for supplier or full automation for all the invoices regardless of the uh, supplier or vendor Okay. This means that the invoice that has been interpreted correctly can flow through automatically in the, into D35. Okay. Important to note here that the Expo Data Capture support the country-specific document types in terms of the invoice format or language point of view. That means that uh, it allows you to capture different set of the data for different legal entity. If, for example, you have company in Singapore and you have uh, other uh, entity in different country, for example, Malaysia, Hong Kong or UK, you will be able to define, uh, uh, define different set of uh, data in your OCR. OK, now you can see that my OK button is available. I can click OK to tell the system to generate the XML file and import the information to the Expo module in D35. OK, let me do that. OK. All right, so let me bring up my PowerPoint. So we have uh, completed the first uh, process uh, for the first component of our solution, which is the OCR. And now we can move on to the second component, which is the Expo module in D35 to show you what happened when the data is imported into D35. OK, let me bring up my system again. All right, so this is the D35. So as I previously mentioned, being fully integrated, I will see or I will find the Explore as a, a one of the module in D35 with the same look and feel as any uh, other standard module. It is completely built into the Dynamics platform and certified by Microsoft. Being built in means that the Xflow does not reinvent the wheel. So if there is a standard uh, functionality in DTC5 that can be used, uh, it can be used. 
OK, so being built in also means that you don't need to think about the integration or cost, and then there will be no synchronization delay. Hence, it will providing you with the real time data, both uh, historical and the current data to your AP process, as well as minimize your training cost to your AP team or your team. OK, so how does uh, Expo work with TC5? OK. Please note that when the invoice data and image are imported uh, from the Expo data capture to the Expo module, they are locked using the standard TC5 document handling. So this will eliminate the risk for the invoices to go missing. And more importantly, it will provide the data for the Expo to automatically generate the month and accrual for you, which I will explain towards the end of our demonstration today. All right. So continuing uh, wearing my AP officer hat, I will now uh, go to one of the workspaces or dashboard uh, within the Expo module called Expo Vendor Invoice Management. So this workspace is essentially is the AP domain or the control center of the invoices where it gives me an overview of all invoices in all status. So this is very powerful workspaces. OK, so for example, uh, it will tell me uh, I have one invoice that has just been imported from the OCR and then now is sitting on my staging table waiting uh, to be moved to the next process. OK, and then I have uh, certain uh, invoices on the import form, OK, which is the invoice administra uh, administration screen for the AP team to process the exception invoices. OK. And also I have the open document in the uh, document form. OK, for uh, the document form is the the will tell you that the, how many invoices that are pending for the approval or are in the approval hand. OK, okay with the uh, uh, price variance or with the quantity variance uh, that already passed due and so on. OK, and then the next one, it also give uh, give me the information of the all the approved invoice. They are pending for the final best job to be posted as the AP to the AP. OK. So it is a great way to quickly understand the overall status of the invoice that currently being processed. OK, so like any other workspaces in DTC5, uh, this workspace can be also adjusted to fit your internal process, such as uh, adding list or uh, tiles or link. Or if you have the Power BI embedded, you can also work on your GAPI graph here. All right, so I have prepared uh, several invoice to show you today. So let me just open up uh, this tile called the open uh, uh, import form. Uh, OK, so where we can see the list of the unprocessed invoices or the exception invoices. So this is the place uh, for the AP team to use to perform the invoice administration for the exception invoices. OK, so what we have here? We have three sections. We have the header section, we have the line level or the coding section, and also we have the invoice image on the right hand side, which is the invoice file attached to the invoice voucher using the standard document handling. Okay. So it means that no matter where are you, uh, where you are in DTT5, if the voucher is the Explo voucher, you will have the access to the invoice image. OK, so whether you are reviewing your trial balance in the GL module or the project transaction in the project module or even approving a payment journal, as long as the Expo voucher, as, uh, as long as the voucher is the Expo voucher, the user can view the invoice image with just two click. OK. All right, so first thing that I would like to point out uh, here is that the Explo uh, su uh, support cross uh, company processing as well as the intercompany processing. This means that as the IP officer, I do not have to switch legal entity to process the invoices. I can just process all invoices from one screen for all the company that I have uh, access to by clicking this cross company uh, button. Right? There are a few actions that has been performed by the Explo uh, during the process of the importing the invoice from the OCR such as the first one is the validation of the posting date. OK, Xflow. Excuse me, Xflow can automatically change the posting date to the first date of the following open period. If the capture invoice date falls into a closed period, for example, let me just uh, 
so uh, a bit. So you can, uh, if you see, if you can see here, this is the very old invoices dated on the first December 2016, and then system is smart enough to move the posting date to the first available or open uh, period, which is on this uh, environment is first uh, February 2023. Okay. And then the next validation that has been uh, performed by the system is the assignment of the vendor account. Okay, so this is achieved uh, using the capture uh, data from the OCR, such as the GST registration number, bank account number, purchase order number, telephone number, to look up and assign the relevant vendor account to the invoice, as I uh, have mentioned previously in the OCR uh, step. So this is uh, this action is actually important for the fraud, uh, prevention. Okay, so system only process the invoice with the relevant information that has been set up in your DTC five. Okay, so for the purchase order invoices such as here, matching invoice between uh, matching between the invoice and then purchase order has been performed by the system. So you can see the matching result here. System already flagged the first one as the quantity uh, variance, and then the rest of the line is the match perfectly. Okay, the matching logic is driven by the matching policy uh, on the procurement module, such as uh, three-way matching or two-way matching, as well as the tolerance that you have defined. No additional setup is required within the XFlow. Okay, so XFlow also support the multiple PO. Uh, to an invoice as well as the partial invoice to a PO. Okay, so Xflow also has the functionality to automatically deal uh, with the miscellaneous charge that come with uh, with the invoice, but not included in the purchase order, such as shipping, uh, uh, packaging, insurance, or freight charges, and etc. And automatically can allocate to the PO lines or charge to the ledger account, all based on the parameters set up in your DTT five. Okay. For the uh, invoice with the quantity variant, Xflow has the feature to allow the invoice to put on hold for the certain number of days. It can be also vendor specific, and then uh, system will do the auto rematch, uh, rematch uh, with your product receipt uh, to the invoice using the uh, periodic patch job at the back end. Okay. So for the invoice that uh, has perfectly matched with the uh, PO. Okay, this invoice will be automatically approved by the system on behalf of the approval and will be automatically posted to hit the AP for the payment. And of course, if there is a variant uh, to this invoice, it will be sent uh, out for the manual uh, for the manual approval and required uh, action. Okay, so for the non-PO invoices, what system can uh, uh, have been performed is do the auto coding or the uh, coding suggestion. Okay, this can be achieved based on the rule that you have set up, such as the vendor or the invoice to code to the uh, project or the ledger or uh, to the fixed asset or to the procurement category or to the landed cost, for example. Okay, on top of that, uh, to keep up to date with the technology of the machine learning, we have another feature to automate coding for your non-PO invoices that uh, can be achieved using the historical data or how the invoice for the vendor was coded previously and do the auto such as the coding. Right? The next action has been performed by the system is the assignment of the uh, approval based on delegation of authority rules set up in your standard DTC5. Okay? The approval chain can be as simple as complex as you want. On top of that, Xflow has the advanced uh, workflow option of course, by uh, this is achieved by the extending DT5 uh, workflow logic. So, for example, Xflow also uh, support the combination of the dimension owner use uh, used within the Xflow. It also can be driven by the main account. For example, you may wish to have the call center owner as the first approval, followed by the department owner as the second approval, and next by the reference person, and all based on the signing limit is also possible. Okay. Mm. On top, uh, excuse me. And if you have concern with the segregation uh, of duties, uh, we can define the number of the approval required within the approval chain. For example, the invoice must be approved by at least uh, two approval. 
Okay, my personal favorite uh, workflow is the negative uh, validation, negative workflow validation to prevent the approval. So it can be used in a situation such as the incomplete uh, coding, or if the invoice does not match to the purchase order, the invoice cannot be approved. Okay. All right, so now I will finish off my invoice processing part as the AP officer by sending up this invoice for the approval as the uh, next step, if the approval required. Okay, I can select all or I can select manually or I can let the best job to run. Okay, and then I click post. So by clicking post button or posting, it doesn't mean that the invoice is now ready for payment. Uh, posting means that I'm sending off the invoice for approval, but it also means that uh, the invoice has been registered, which will allow the Xflow to generate the accrual list if the invoice are pending for the approval. All right, so let us go back to the our workspaces. Okay, you can see that uh, we don't have any more in the uh, open invoice in the uh, import form, and then it's all. Uh, distribute to the uh, multiple uh, tiles in the document form with all the status, okay? So this is the end of the invoice processing from the AP perspective. So now I'll uh, jump off to the uh, approval using my approval hat to talk about the invoice approval, okay? All right, so as the approval, how do I know that I have something to action? Okay, so as the approval, what I will get is the list of the email notification containing a list of the invoice for me to action. Okay, the email will be in the form of the consolidated report like this example. So it is not one email per invoices, so it will not clutter my email inbox. Okay, how often the email can be generated, it can be controlled by the batch process. Okay. So I can click the link provided in the email, which will take me to the Xflow web. And of course, I can log into Expo Web directly if I have bookmarked the URL. That is uh, where we are heading to now. Okay. Okay, let me move out here. Okay. Okay, all right. So this is my uh, Expo Web or Expo Cloud. So because DTC5 is the web based, so in terms of the approval interface, there are two options. First is the Expo Web, which is the one that you are seeing now in the screen. As this and the second one is the workspaces within DC5 called my vendor invoices. Now, in terms of the cost, uh, there is no additional cost. You have both. Whether you choose to use one or another uh, is totally up to you. Okay. So the Expo Web is regarded as the preferred tool for the approval. First, because uh, obviously it's a cost. It a uh, much lower cost from the point of view of the Microsoft licensee because it's using the team member license. Second, it is normally used by uh, non-heavy DC5 user, which uh, might not need to have the drill down functionality. And the third one is the user friendly. Okay, so what we have here, we have the list of the uh, invoice waiting for me to approve or to action. Okay, and if I have access to multiple legal entity, uh, this is the single view for me to view all the invoice assigned to me. Okay, another action I can perform here is including uh, adding the replacer or nominate someone on behalf of me when I go on leave. For example, for this uh, entity, I will nominate Vesna uh, for this certain period to review and approve the invoice on behalf of me. And also we have a quick tips here, which is essentially is a video recording of an action that can be referred as the help of the user manual. Okay. But of course, the main purpose here obviously is to uh, to approve the invoice. So let's just open up one of the invoice. Okay, let's just take the last one. I just simply double click. So this is the detailed view of the purchase order invoice in the Expo web. Okay, so what we have here, we have the header information. We have line level information. So here you can see that uh, system as well also uh, tag with the price variant. So it tag with the what is the price on your PO and then what is the price in your invoice. Okay, so within this Expo web, there is also functionality or chat functionality that you can communicate with your uh, uh, APT member, for example, to check why there is a price variant and then to check uh, 
to follow up with the vendor. Or if let's say you just want to put a note here, okay? You also have the ability to attach uh, additional uh, document for this particular invoices, okay? All right, and then see another invoices, for example, the non-PO invoices. Okay, similar look and feel, but for the non-PO invoices, the difference here, if you do have the privilege to change the uh, the coding, for example, you will be able to override or update the ledger uh, main account or the financial dimension, even to split the, the value, okay? To approve the invoice, you can just simply hover to this uh, approve button, and then there is an option for you to approve, to reject, or not hold. Okay, for this example, let's just approve the invoice. All right. All right, so it will be dis uh, disappear, and then system will give me the next invoice for me to uh, approve. Okay. So one of the benefit or the reason uh, why the Expo Web is the, although it is not the app, but it can be automated to suit all the types of the device. Expo Web will auto detect the device used to login and adjust the user interface accordingly. So for example, I'm uh, pretending to uh, access the Expo Web using my iPhone 8. So this is the interface that I will see uh, on my mobile app. So similar list of the invoices. I can double click. So it's the same thing. I have the header level information. I have line level information, and then I have the invoice image on the uh, down button here. And then same action that I can perform on the website. Also, I can perform on my mobile phone, right? All right. Now the second interface that I'm uh, gonna talk is the quickly is the my vendor invoices uh, within the uh, DTC five. So, for example, uh, here, oops. Okay. Okay, for example, this invoice with the PO. Right? So, I have three sections here. I have the header level, I have line detail level. Oops, sorry. Not too much. Okay. And then the difference is if you do have access to access uh, different uh, module, you will be able to do the drill down functionality. For example, the order number, uh, me as the supply chain manager, for example, I will be able to uh, go to the purchase order directly outside the expo. All right. Okay, so hope we all good with the invoice approval process. Okay, so uh, now I will show you uh, some example of the reporting capabilities provided by Xflow uh, before we end uh, this demonstration. So as part of the standard solution, Xflow will provide the analytic uh, workspace like this. Okay, as you can see here, there is a valuable uh, report uh, that provides the information as KPIs, uh, number of the invoices that has been processed, average invoices processing days and time, and then uh, uh, top uh, vendor by the company across the entity. Okay, for example, from the approval information, you can see the average approval per day, and then you can see active uh, invoice per approval. So you can see the bottleneck who's the, the uh, uh, which company that have more uh, bottleneck of the uh, invoicing, why it's not approved. Okay, and then also you have the uh, Another chart, for example, top uh, best PO match with vendor and then top worst uh, PO match with the vendor. Okay. All right. So another feature that I want to talk to you, the second last one is the oops, agreement. Okay. Okay. So Expo also uh, allow company to set up the contract to automate the matching of the recurring invoices that not using the purchase order. Okay, this means that you can automate the handling of your mobile phone or utilities or leasing or other recurring spend category. So basically, Expo is using the PO logic for non-PO invoices. Okay, so for example, here I have set up the All right, sorry, wrong one. Okay. All 
Okay, so for here, I have set up the rental uh, 2023 with the reference Justina with the vendor account uh, 002 uh, BRF Invoice uh, Properties for this period, 1st of January until uh, 31st of uh, December. Okay, with the period uh, billing is the monthly, total uh, maximum invoice is 1000 and then total invoice uh, for one contract is 12000. Okay. So instead of setting up the PO uh, for rental, we can utilize the Explo agreement within the Explo. So it is also provide the flexibility to set up the contract that can be fluctuated over the time. For example, like this, different uh, month, different uh, uh, amount, for example. In this case, you can save uh, time on the sending invoice out for the approval, for the manual approval. So as long as the invoice is matched with the agreement, with all the detail, the invoice will be automatically posted and then it will hit your AP for the payment. Okay, so finally, the last feature that I'm going to show you today is the which will be benefit for the finance people is the month and uh, accrual. Okay, so as you probably know, the company may be uh, doing the month and reporting, uh, which probably takes hours or even days. Uh, just to work on the month end uh, accrual. So with this feature, it provides the ability to create your month end accrual uh, journal automatically for those unapproved invoice, which is can be from the PO or non PO. Okay, so if it, it is three way matching, we will take those unapproved invoice, but the good receipt that has not been processed and for the two way matching or uh, non PO invoices, we will pick up all the unapproved uh, invoice amount. So for example, I will want to run the accrual for 31st of January. I'm uh, working on the January accrual. And then uh, with the reversal date is the 1st of February uh, 2023. Okay, I can include the type of the transaction that I want to include on the accrual and then simply hit OK. Right. So system give me the information that the journal has been created. So let's just go to the GL module. Okay, should be the last one. Right. So as you can see here, instead of simply providing a basic unapproved invoice report, we have gone a step further by converting the report to the re uh, reversing journal. Okay, to be reviewed and posted. Okay, so with the as well as the with the invoice image attached. So as if you still remember, as long as the invoice, the voucher is the expo voucher, you will be able to review the invoice. Okay. So once you're happy, you can proceed with the uh, posting as per the standard DD5. All right. So that concludes my demonstration for today. So thank you so much for your attention. With that, I'll hand it back to you, Yipin. Thank you, Justina. I appreciate it. Uh, we move to our last stage of our webinar, and basically that's a QA. and a And so I want to just uh, open this floor. I've not seen any uh, questions coming in, but I'd like to open up this floor to see whether you have any questions. Please feel free to ask the questions. Anybody? Don't be shy. Mm. Okay, I'll just give another few more seconds. <laughs> Okay, there is a question uh, from Nishit. Uh, it says, can we access the video recording? Uh, yes, we will. Uh, if you indicate it to us, uh, we will um, make sure that the video is available to, to you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, 
Okay, we have a question from Benson Lim. Due to the PDF format, is to bring it into D365 FO, will it consume the system memory? Um, Justina, are you able to have an answer on that or we may have to check this out with our technical team? So let me repeat the question. Due to the PDF format that we are bringing it into D365 FO, will it consume the system memory? I believe you are referring to the application server then, Benson. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think it's because we are using the the document handling, right? So it's it's the same uh, the same as you attach the the PDF file. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. So a short answer to your question, Benson, is uh, yes, uh, it will definitely consume uh, the system memory. Okay, Nishit has a question here. Uh, the question is, how do we address price variance and quantity variance in D365? Uh, okay, so how to address price variance or quantity variance in, in the Explore module, right? So again, yep. it's again, it depends on how uh, the business process on your company. So for example, if there is a, if the invoice is not with the, uh, not matched with the PO, then uh, you will, for example, you 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 need to to update the PO to check why it's 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 different, or if let's say we have set up the tolerance of the price variant in the DC five, then system will uh, allow it to the approve. For the quantity variance, like I mentioned on the on the demo just now, we have the functionality to hold the invoice for the approval, and then do the rematch again if there is a new product receipt for that particular invoices at a time to do the invoice approval. Thank you, Justina. Nishit, I hope that uh, Justina have, uh, yep, okay. Thank you, Justina, okay, got it. So I presume that uh, you understood and you have answered your question. Well, I appreciate all these questions. Uh, any more questions, you know, let's make it, uh, uh, a worthwhile time while we are online here. If you don't want to type the question, that's fine. You could also just uh, voice out your question. Hello. Yes. Hi, Wang Fei. You have <laughs> yes. a question. Yes, I, I'm from Thailand. Uh, so I I wonder when I saw the uh, capture the the data that capture from the PDF PDF file, right? I'm not sure. Is it also available for the BE year? I mean, in Thailand, most of the vendors still use the BE year in Thailand. So I'm not sure. Is it is there any automation set up behind that? We, uh, uh, well, so far, the what's Buddhist, the, yeah, the what's, what's the what's the BE? Sorry, uh, if you could help us to. Uh, the year of the Buddhist year is starting like currently, uh, two two thousand twenty three, right? But in in Thailand, some uh vendor they use the year like uh two thousand. 500, 2566, yeah. Oh, 2566, the Buddhist, the Buddhist year. Yes. So um, how is that being configured in the D365 right uh, now? The, the D365, D365, because we enter uh, like manually, right? We just put like 2023 for this year. But in terms of uh, data capture, I mean, uh, how how to if we uh, upload this kind of uh, vendor invoice and it show like two five six six, can it be convert automatically to two oh two two three? Oh, okay. okay. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, for the OCR point of view, so just now I have highlighted uh, about the specific country profile. So we do have also the uh, profile for the Thai that we can also we can also interpret the invoice in Thai language, and then uh, as well as the converting that that the format into the local. Um, by individual vendor, right? Because some vendor use uh, yeah. the. Yeah, the okay. interpretation is per vendor level. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question, Sir uh, That's a good question. It seems applies for Taiwan. Taiwan use uh, uh, a different year. Okay. Uh, Huang Fei, I, just for your information, uh, Justina have uh, answered your question via the chat. I hope uh, you, uh, she has answered your question on that. Okay, good. These are all good questions coming in. Um, anybody else have questions? Yeah, feel mm -hmm. free to just voice or even chat, uh, type it out in the chat. So Joe Manishif here, just would like to ask that, is there any accreditation or certification that we can do? Uh, it says that uh, we know explore uh, implementation and stuff. Uh, okay, sorry, I missed your question earlier, Nishif, on that in the chat. Um, yeah, I think for resellers, uh, we do have a training program for that. Uh, and then uh, once you are a reseller, we will provide you the uh, uh, online training and uh, the necessary videos to support it. And most of the training would be done, uh, how would I put it? I mean, there won't be any exam, uh, just like what you see in Microsoft, uh, but uh, you typically be uh, working hand in hand together with the Expo consultants uh, as what we call a buddy system, right? Hope that answers your question, Nishi. Yep. Uh, Justina, have a uh, request, Savitri, uh, if you could uh, send us a sample of the invoice in a uh, tie for us to uh, further validate, uh, that will be good. Uh, oh, Yusina, yeah. If, yeah, yeah. Yusina, if you can just type in your uh, email ID, uh, so then. Oh, yeah. I, can, I yeah, think, I yeah. Can. Oh, you, you don't have the email. Okay, I can email. I can put it there. No worries. I'm I'm also typing my my email ID too. So uh, for anybody who want to uh, communicate with me later, feel free. Do you need to like the sample of the, the Thai character as well? <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, in Thailand to be fair, because uh, so as my experience, the customer, they they sometimes use like uh, handwriting for the vendor invoice. This is the challenge in Thailand. <laughs> mm. And the dot paper, like uh, dot printer. It's yeah. not really clear, so uh, I think the the non PO invoice maybe it's <laughs> challenge a lot <laughs> to capture the data. Yeah. Okay, I will send you. Uh, if I have some example, I will send you through yes, the please. email. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? So, Chung, uh, as you mentioned about. Uh, Shadowing with team yep. members. So I work for one of the IT company. Uh, right now, obviously, I am not working on Explo. Uh, any project that uh, we are implementing Explo, or I don't know, sign up software is implementing. There are a couple of software uh, uh, projects are there uh, with the company I work with. But if I want to learn, uh, Nishi, knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Nishi, which company are you from? Uh, so that I can get a better clarity. EXE Technology. 
Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, so if you want to get a better clarity or better information on uh, Hexlo, um, that is your question, right? How do you get the content? Is that where you're coming from? Yeah. So I do have access to contents and stuff. Okay. okay. I can see the videos and everything. It's just like I want to bit of mentoring. Uh, uh, a bit that, of mentor. Yeah, that whatever, that whether I'm in the right direction or if I'm doing something uh, because I did. Okay. What I can uh, what yes. I can suggest, Nishit, is uh, if you can drop me an email sure. uh, to my email ID, which I've written in the chat, I yeah. would uh, glad to take this offline with you. Sure. Thanks. No worries. I appreciate that. Any other questions? I really appreciate all these questions because, uh, yeah, that helps us to uh, help you even better, right? Um, maybe we have one last question before we end the session. Uh, seems uh, unless there are more questions, I can see hands up or anything. But one last question before we end the session. Nobody taking up the offer? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think if there are no further questions, uh, really I would like to thank all of your time, you know, taking one hour of your time or a little bit more than that to join us in this session. I hope that uh, we can continue to stay in touch and we will definitely be staying, keeping in touch with you. And uh, for those who need the videos, yeah, you know, put up your hand, shout to us. Uh, we will make that video available to you. All right. Um, okay. Yes, Benson, you wanted it. Yep. And I know Nishit wanted that too. So we'll make a note of that. Uh, if there's no other further questions, yeah. Uh, I would like to just uh, once again thank everyone. And we would like to end the session for today and hope to uh, see you all soon in the near future doing business together. <laughs>